So the LA Police Department is very different now than it was under Daryl Gates. It's very different now than it was five years ago, 10 years ago. Um, they've learned a lot from this experience and many people in the police department themselves would say we still have a ways to go. The yes, department still do. has we a ways a to go. go. Um, our time is tight. I could talk to you forever, but our time is tight. <laughs> so I, I, only I, have, on I only have one last question, okay. which, which is, is how is were you able to use what you learned yeah. Yeah. then to push the department, yes, this to is very push the department forward? Y'all need to be on your feet cheering, okay? <laughs> because this is a very, very happy story. We're in the middle of it. It is not that the whole department has changed, Michelle. It is that a specialized unit that I created with Chief Beck has completely transformed American policing. It's not the whole department. It is this one specialized unit. And let me tell you how it happened, and I don't care if we go over, y'all just gonna have to we, wait. We, we do have to. <laughs> now. <laughs> we, 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 no, no, no. <laughs> I gotta rein you in a little bit, because we do have to stay on time. Here's the deal. A Korean-American family was getting ready to move into Jordan Downs Housing Project. There are three African-American dominated housing projects and several Latino dominated. I've done most of my work and Watts in these housing projects. Long story short, Korean-American family moves in. My staff come in the next day and say, Connie, I've got bad news. The Korean-American family moved in and the Grape Street Crips robbed them of every single possession they have. They didn't even let them move it off the moving truck. They just took the whole moving truck. The Grape, the Grape Street. Street a gang that runs Jordan Down Housing Project, okay? Long story short, they marched the women upstairs for gang raping. Michelle, I lost it. I lost it. I don't remember driving to the police headquarters, but apparently I did. I marched up the freight elevator because I refused to go through security. There's a way to get up to the top of the new LAPD building, they take it the freight elevator, which is where they take the prisoners. I know this because I followed prisoners up there. And you, you go bypass all the security, and I marched right in, and they said, Miss Rice, I'm sorry, Chief Beck is busy. I said, I don't care if he's meeting with the Pope, you get him out here now. Charlie came out, I was in tears. I don't remember crying, but apparently he'd never seen me in tears. I said, how did we let this, how do we allow this to happen? This is publicly owned housing. How do we allow this to happen to any family? This poor Korean-American family had waited three years to get in to this housing project, and this is what we allow to happen? What the, where the hell is Hackler, the housing authority? Where the hell were we? And what grew where out, was I? What grew out of that? I know you're trying to hurry me along, but I want to tell this <laughs> but, story. But, <laughs> Here's the deal. Charlie said, Connie, you and I met in Watts 30 years ago when you were suing me, and you and I both know what these people go through. These are not people who are meant to be included. These are the people that LA discards. And we, you and I are gonna fix this. He said, what do you want? I said, I want 50 officers. He said, done. I said, I want them pay grade advance. They gotta be the highest paid officers on the force. He said, done. I said, I need 10 supervisors. He said, I want, them, I want 10 for four housing projects. He said, done. I want you to force Hakla into an MOU to have these police 24 seven, no breaks in coverage. He said, done. I went down, I done, done, done. If I had known, I'd have asked for 200 officers. He was gonna say that, yes that easily. Bottom line, Chief Beck and I created the Community Safety Partnership Police. When Mrs. Tolliver and Mrs. Day, two of the gang grandmothers, heard of it, they called me up and they said, you light white, damn near white bitch. How dare you bring these police into our house? And we do not want these cops, we hate these cops. I said, I know, you blame me. Don't blame the police, blame me. This is my idea and Chief Beck has to do what I tell him. I have them believe that, it's not true. They cussed me to a fair they well. Well, the cops got there, long story short, first day they got there, they said, we know you don't want us here. We have killed your children. We know you hate us. We are LAPD and we know why you hate us. We're here to try and turn the page. Help us to keep the young kids safe. Mrs. Day and Mrs. Tolliver agreed, even though LAPD has killed three of their children apiece. We did training for the community so that the community could learn to think of the police differently and we definitely retrained these cops. We told these cops, you are not in the arrest business. You will not get any credit for any arrest. You will only get credit for demonstrating how you avoided arresting a child. You will only get credit for showing that the community trusts you. You will only get credit for helping the elders. You will only get credit for helping the schools and helping kids stay in school. So long story short, it got called Connie Rice's female policing and it got called 
social working policing, and it got called a whole bunch of other derogatory things. But ladies and gentlemen, four years later, those cops are revered. They cleaned up Great Street Alley. The grandmothers did a dance up and down that alley when they got done. They could have done surgery with it. It was a cesspool before they got done. LAPD called up Public Works and said, if you don't get your trucks out there, we're arresting you tomorrow. That alley was cleaned up. They then bought bifocals for the elders. They bought computers for the kids. They escort the kids to school every day. They, they did a farmer's market for the Ramona Gardens residents. And they have the lowest homicide rate in the city. Here's the deal. These cops aren't just trusted, they are revered. Mrs. Tolliver called me up, she said, she said, yes, Miss Hayella, we still don't like you. <laughs> Which is fine by me. We still don't like you, but if those cops ever leave, don't ever let them leave. So here's the thing. These are police who have been completely reoriented to earning trust through service. They are not promoted. I determine the promotions. Isn't that dangerous? <laughs> Charlie Beck and I determine the promotions together. The community has to give thumbs up to this officer. The community is surveyed. Most of their evaluation is based on how the community, whether the community trusts them, whether the community thinks that cop loves their children, and ladies and, and gentlemen, and here's the deal. Trust. I, I really trust. do need to. No, no, no. no, no. no One no, more story. I need to bring you around the corner to the. When just out of respect for the rest of the people okay. on the panel. Okay. Okay. So. All right. Rest of the people on the panel, you want to hear this too. <laughs> the. One more story. Just no, one no, more, no, Michelle. We can't, we can't do one well, more story. Well, when two, we when two story, families we... had all of the adults arrested, these cops adopted the black children in those families because they didn't want them to go to county care. Here's the deal. We can transform American policing. We know it because we've done it in LA. Thank you. Thank you.